Hi everyone, welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about selectable markers. I know you guys know about selectable markers, but uh, again, uh, I'm doing this video because to complete the whole set of recombinant DNA technology stuff and again, do you really know what selectable marker is? Again, let's talk about it. Selectable markers are some gene sequence. Anytime, if you see anything called marker in any sense, you will definitely know it's uh, we are talking about the gene sequences there uh, in genetics obviously. So selectable marker means it's an artificial gene sequence that we introduce inside a vector uh, which will help us to develop some kind of phenotypic expression that we can artificially measure from outside. That is what selectable marker really is, right? So that is the idea of selectable marker. That means uh, if you look for cloning, the experiments of cloning, the idea is very simple. You have a target DNA. You need to take the target DNA out from a huge complexity of the genome. You put it inside a vector, which is a gene carrying system. And then you put the vector inside a host cell, most probably a bacterial cell. And then you want the bacterial cell to divide and grow. And then you can extract those plasmids or you can extract the products that will be produced from those uh, genes uh, or expression of the genes. So that's how you produce it. So this is the cloning approach. Now you know the problem is during the different state, state stages of cloning, we can't actually see what's going on there in the test tubes and all those tubes. So the idea is we need to check uh, whether the expression of the protein is going on or not. And that is very, very important because you know, once uh, you, you prepare the recombinant DNA, for example, I'm not going to talk about again from the ABCDs, but uh, this is the vector and this is the gene of your interest and you already prepared this this is called the obviously the recombinant dna so you you prepare the recombinant dna and then you want this recombinant dna to be inserted so if you see the bacterial cell inside this bacteria recombinant uh, this this cell will be inserted to the bacteria to the host this is the host cell okay you put it inside the host cell so once now it is inside the host cell, the cell will divide and you get that. Now the problem is during this process of the transfer, uh, your host cell may uh, get this recombinant DNA or may not get the recombinant DNA. That depends because you rely upon a technique called transformation to transfer it uh, and it is not always accurate. So uh, you, you never know whether the cell you are looking at contains your target DNA or not. Uh, so for these cases, what will happen uh, once, the, once you get the cell, you put it into the agar plate and you want the cells to grow. So this is the petri dish and in this petri dish you will see colonies, bacterial colonies. But you never know which colony exactly contains your gene of interest because you get the colonies there but you, you don't know that. Uh, so to make sure, if you start taking up bacterial cells, start and after some experiments you found out that that cell does not even contain uh, your gene of interest that will be very very time consuming or waste of time you don't want to do that because you know in some cases we want to prepare genetic libraries you know DNA libraries the genomic libraries or cDNA libraries in any kind of libraries that we want to prepare now the tedious task there is to figure out which cell contains the gene of interest that is the most important thing I mean, there comes, this, comes the most difficult parts, not in the cloning. Cloning is actually comparatively easy uh, with this uh, screening task. So the screening is very, very difficult. And to make this screening easy, what we need to do is we need to rely upon some type of marker sequences, some type of gene sequences that will act as a gene marker, that will express something which we can find out by looking at the colony. By looking at the colony, we can straight pick that colony uh, the bacterial cells from the colony and we can culture it uh, for the next experiments. So for that reason we have something that will give either a visual effect or any sort of effect. Mostly uh, we rely upon two different types of markers. One, one is called the positive, positive type of uh, selectable marker and negative type of selectable marker. So positive type of selectable marker if you choose positive selectable marker means that will obviously add the benefit to the bacteria. That means if the marker sequence is present the bacteria will grow, the bacteria will divide and the bacteria will live. But in the negative type of markers uh, that means uh, the sequence, if the gene sequence, if the marker sequence is present in the bacteria, the bacteria will not survive and then we can find that whether uh, we the bacteria of our interest contain the gene of or not. 
So in both the way we can use it. And in the positive type, the most common type of selectable marker that we use in the artificial uh, preparation of artificial vectors like plasmids and phasmids and cosmids are uh, antibiotic resistance. Antibiotic resistance. Okay, so antibiotic resistance markers like ampicillin resistance, for example. Ampicillin resistance, for example. So what will you do is that we know that if this ampicillin resistance gene is present in the bacteria, that bacteria will grow on another plate which is filled with ampicillin antibiotic, right? On the other hand, those bacterial cell which does not have ampicillin resistant marker will not grow. So the presence of this ampicillin resistance gene or the presence of this selectable marker gene which is ampicillin resistance will tell us whether the bacteria will grow or not. So if we see a bacteria growing in the plate containing ampicillin, we call it these are all the colonies which contains our selectable marker. Now the thing is we need to attach selectable marker somehow with the target DNA. We need to attach it somehow to the target DNA in such a way that we can tell is yes if selectable marker is present then definitely our target DNA is also present in those cells right. So that is how we can identify in the field of uh, if we plate these bacterial cells in a agar plate we can tell yes uh, these are the colonies so obviously these are the colonies which contains uh, the marker. So obviously these are the colonies which contains the gene of our interest. That is how we can understand about uh, these uh, colonies and you can pick colonies from there. We can tell that what is going on exactly there. Okay? This is one way of selectable marker in the positive way. The negative way however we can tell uh, say some cases uh, again we, if we talk about the antibiotic resistance the situation will be opposite. And now those uh, bacteria which will grow does not contain our uh, gene of interest. We, we put these things in such a way that uh, the bacteria that will grow contains uh, the, uh, they does not contain the, they do not contain the sequence uh, gene of interest, but they will, the bacterial cell which uh, we do not see in the agar plate contain the gene of interest. So these are some examples and not only for the antibiotic resistance itself, we can also use other things like uh, color expressions and stuff, okay. Like blue white screening is a type of example where we use this uh, selectable marker in a remarkable way to find out whether our cell or cell we are looking at contains the gene of interest or not. Now, if you want to know details about blue white screening, I will recommend you to watch that video. That video is placed uh, in the description. The link is placed in the description. Just click on that link and you will be uh, getting that video. Okay. Now, these are the ways uh, to think of selectable markers, but they are very, very important for the screening of uh, the cloning. After the cloning, we want to understand what is going on and for that purpose, they serve brilliantly. As well as for screening of a genetic library or, ge or screening of uh, most of the cases, the genomic library, which are big libraries containing all the genetic sequences of an organism, we can easily do that with these selectable markers. Without the markers, we won't be able to do that. Now, what are some examples of that? We can give some example like neogene. Neogene can act as uh, this marker, uh, it's an antibiotic uh, marker uh, for the canamycin resistance, okay. Uh, in some cases, we, 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 we use this neogene, okay. We also use other type of things like we also use beta-lactamase. Beta-lactamase has an antibiotic resistance marker for the, uh, for, for, for the amp ampicillin resistance, we use beta-lactamase uh, as a marker gene. So because you know beta lactamase can cleave that uh, beta lactam ring. So all this antibiotics, ampicillin, penicillins, they will cleave the ring and the antibiotic will not work. So the presence of this gene uh, will uh, tell that bacteria will grow in presence of the ampicillin. So these are the some examples of the selectable markers that we often use in molecular cloning. So they are very much important for molecular cloning and subcloning applications. And for their this ability for using them to screen uh, specific cells from, uh, from a lot of different colonies of bacteria, we also call them screening markers. So selectable markers are scre and screening markers, both of them are very, very similar. You can kind of use these terms in a kind of synonymously. So that's all about selectable markers. I hope you guys like this video. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button in the button and also subscribe to my channel by clicking this large red button there 
don't forget to subscribe because we need your vote we need your subscription to keep going thank you